good Thursday morning here on the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christian Brown, as always. And today, today is our very last entertainment rundown of the season of the year, and not of the season of the year for 2021. We are back again with the man in the sky, the man in New York who used to be in LA, Mr. Michael Nichols Pate. Michael, thank you so much for doing this once again. Greatly appreciate it. Happy to be here. <laughs> So we are going to recap the best movies of 2021, the best TV shows of 2021, the biggest news stories of 2021, but also in the style of Chris and Michael yell at each other for at least a good 20 minutes and disagree on something at the end of the, <laughs> the podcast. We're going to disagree on everything. Probably, probably. Um, so uh, let's let's kick this off with one big uh, jump. It, let's like let's not dip our toe into it. Let's just jump into the pool right away. How was entertainment news and movies and TV for you in 2021? Was there uh, was it a good year for movies? Because 2020 was a shitty year for movies and TV because of the pandemic. But people seem to have gotten over that. For you, was it good? Um, I'm not gonna lie. When I was sitting there trying to do my top 10 for movies, I was like, what came out this year? What have I seen? Because like movie theaters still were closed down. So there was a lot of stuff where I'm like, I would love to have said I saw that because I heard it was good, but I haven't seen it yet because I'm not necessarily going to theaters yet. So my top 10 movies list, I'm like, I don't, I wouldn't say these were like top 10 but I kind of had to include them because I didn't see as much in terms of movies. Now, TV shows, I saw quite a lot. And a lot, I shamelessly was like, I can't put this on here. I can't put Riverdale on here. Yes, you I, can. Uh, <laughs> I sure could not. You just I did. Sure cannot. You just did. I did not. I did not. Trust me, it's not on the top 10. But like, I, I don't know. I feel like the movies could have potentially been fire this year. I just... I still haven't seen a lot of the big ones that are coming out right now. I think there was still a bit of a lull between the pandemic, like right before the, the summer started when people were like, great, pandemic's over. And we were all like, uh, no, it's not, people, calm down. <laughs> we're still hold, in it. Hold your horses, hold your horses, back it up, back the truck up here, people, because as much as you think the pandemic's over, it ain't. <laughs> I will say, though, this entertainment news, there was a lot of drama that happened. I was, like, pulling stuff up for it. I'm like, oh, my God, there was a lot of stuff that happened. Like, lest we forget Chet Hanks in his White Boy Summer. That was probably one of the greatest, most uncomfortable moments that came out of this entire year. It's not on my list because it's, like, yikes, but it's, like, it's great. <laughs> that, that's a song right? Well, it started out as an experience. Um, Chet Hanks decided is Tom, he was going, Is Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson's yes. son? Yes. He decided that he needed to say that it was white boy summer and not like Donald Trump, white trash, white boy summer, but like Jack Harlow, white boy summer. And like loving on black women white boy summer like and then he wrote an entire song in a jamaican accent called white boy summer and it was very uncomfortable and it was iconically a train wreck so for those who are watching this right now and not listening to this this is the moment in time if i have enough time and if i can find it the white boy summer song would be playing right now with video no nope, no nope. Nope, 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 nope. No? You cannot. It, uh-uh, no. There is like, it, it's, it, go, you have to go listen to it, y'all, on your own if you want to. But like, this is just, it's just such a train wreck. And it drops the N-word far more than I'm comfortable any white man saying okay. ever. Never not. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, don't put it in here. <laughs> we don't need nobody canceled for promoting Chad Hanks. If you really want to go listen to Chad go listen to chat but like yikes it was a train wreck then and it's still a train wreck now and my friend and I still talk about it regularly it's he gets the biggest train wreck of 2021 award good times good times that's how I like to hear it um 
for 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 me, I think the biggest political, the biggest political, biggest entertainment <laughs> news story of the year was, and this goes back to. Uh, it goes, it's a little bit not celebrity-ish, but it's more movie industry. The movie industry has changed the way that it really is releasing movies now. With the pandemic, we are now no longer waiting 90 days to uh, release movies after they start appearing in the theaters. Now it's a 45 day window. And this has caused a lot of cine, uh, cine, cinemas to be pissed off because that's where they get most of their money from is from moviegoers. But now with the pandemic, people are now just okay with sitting on their asses at their homes, watching the movies 45 days after it comes into theater. And we are seeing more movie studios moving to a more hybrid release where they release it in uh, on their streaming service and in theaters for the same price. And I think you're going to see that more going into 2022, but I think that is the biggest entertainment bombshell that sort of a hit besides the free Britney movement, which we're probably going to talk about here in a few minutes, but the <laughs> shocker <laughs> shocker with my Nichols paid here. But I think that was my biggest uh, entertainment news for the year, because that changes the name of the game because we didn't see um uh, what was it? What was the last? A Shang-Chi in theaters. We saw it when it came out on Disney Plus because we had waited. Because we were like, why are we going to go to a movie theater when we're going to have to go listen to people eat popcorn and we can just sit at home, wait 45 days, not read Wikipedia spoilers, and just watch it. <laughs> like, it's not that hard. But it seems like a lot of movie theaters are pissed off, which I understand. Meh. <laughs> like movie theaters get over it y'all i mean i get it it's movie theaters are going the way of blockbuster right blockbuster movie theaters are going the way of retail period exactly everyone's everyone's going online it's it's the name of the world it's the way the world's going and i hate to say it but movie theaters i don't see you lasting longer than 2025 you're going to start yeah. seeing you're going to start seeing them close down more you're going to see probably like in Calgary alone, I think there's probably like 15 or 20 that could probably boil down to five because you are, you're only packing people in for like the big blockbuster movies, like fantastic and fast and the furious or Marvel movies. You're not going to see the movie Belfast in theaters. I'm sorry, but you're not going to see dear Evan Spence, uh, dear Evan Hansen in theater. I don't care. who Was that you on are. your top 10? Oh, totally, totally. <laughs> Sorry. I, for those who are listening right now, I'm being the nice one of the group today. So I'm not. <laughs> I'm here to fight. Just like the Vixen in RuPaul's Drag Race season 10, I came to fight. And I'm going to say this. We got another batch load of shitty drag queens this year again. So there's another... Um, you cannot come for Jasmine Kennedy. I know her. She's lovely. The rest, I don't care. But Okay. So one out of like 900 does not. Make You're welcome. Good, but... You're welcome. I don't know what more you want from RuPaul. He's fracking for you. Ooh. The fracking. So what other entertainment news did you see this year? Um, entertainment news. We're just going to jump right in on everything, kind of segueing. Let's look back at January oh. when GameStop became the hottest stock market item in the United States and Canada. And, and Canada. It, we love that GameStop moment. I was mad that I didn't get to invest in time because I could have had a lot of freaking money right now. Yeah, I, I have a lot of money, but it's all tied up in a locked in retirement account. So I can't touch said money, but hey, I made said money, which now it's all like going to hell in a handbasket because Joe Biden, but we won't go there. Yeah, this is entertainment. <laughs> but, and let me tell you, this GameStop stock was entertaining. Watching people lose their minds over it and like the Robin Hood and the this and the that all trying to like control it and Reddit being like, haha, gotcha, bitch. And so, then moving to different apps when they got shut down. So, for those who don't remember, so this happened 
like literally January. The first, January. Uh, a bunch of users on Reddit, which is an open source uh, discussion forum, uh, talked about uh, how they were getting screwed over by the man, the man. So they were looking at stocks and they were looking at investment portfolios and they were seeing where the big CEOs were moving their money. And they saw that C, uh, the CEO and the CFO of GameStop was taking their money out of GameStop at a certain time. So what they all did was they went in and they jacked up the prices right after the CFO unloaded them, which increased, ran a, like a freaking shitload of money into GameStop which everyone was like, what's going on here? And like literally Congress had to pass a motion to stop this because they had to shut down Robinhood, which was the app, which is open source uh, stock trading app, which allowed people to like trade and buy stocks and GameStop without going through the big banks, which pissed off a lot of the banks too, because they were out of the money too. Well, Robinhood basically started selling people's GameStop stock. Mm -hmm. And people were like, I didn't want to sell this. And Robin Hood's like, well, you're too stupid to understand stocks. So we had to sell it so you don't lose all your money. And people were pissed. Like there was a lot of drama involving this. And this was right off the gate, right out the, right out the door. Mm -hmm. This briefly united the United States politics also briefly. Very because re Republicans were were okay with it, like the the libertarian Republicans were okay with it, not the big bank Republicans like Mitch McConnell, but the Rand Paul. Like, can you imagine a, a statement of Rand Paul being a good guy for once? Ted he, Cruz and AOC agree. Exactly, they were like, "This is how the free market works." And yep. when AOC and Ted Cruz works, you uh, agree on something. Yet again, we're going to politics here, but. You have to I'm look sure, at. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to. You, you have to sit there and go. What the fuck's going on with the world? If that's what's happening now. Yup. So in February, what happened? Um, I don't know about February, but y'all remember Jeopardy did that host search that resulted in the executive producer being named the head host of Jeopardy after so, they did this lengthy of interviewing and having like 20 different people as a guest host and then surprise the executive producer is just going to take over executive producer and Mia Mialem Bialik will, she was just going to be doing the guest hosting she was just going like to, the she was going to do like the college jeopardy and the so like celebrity champions yeah. and shit like that yeah and there was a big push for Le LeVar Burton to be the next host, Mr. Reading Rainbow himself. After a, week of doing, after a week of doing it, he went and said, I'm never doing that again <laughs> because that was painful. Well, there was already a big push the minute that Alex Trebek died. Mm -hmm. People were already pushing for LeVar Burton. And the executive producer was the one who tra trained all of the hosts auditioning so that's why people were a little upset because they were like, LeVar Burton didn't do a good job, but is it because LeVar Burton is not right fit or is it because he got bad training from the dude who wanted the job? Yeah. And as of right now, there, so uh, the front runners of, of that were LeVar Burton and Ken Jennings. The moment Ken Jennings did a guest spot because he was the very first guest host after Alex Trebek had died. So yeah. old tweets resurfaced, which I, again, in 2021, God bless Twitter, because it will be a stain on you for the rest of your life. Uh, he had sure said will. he had said some transphobic things, and a lot of people basically said you can't hire him. So he basically dropped off the front runners list. Uh, LeVar Burton came up, and then Mia, um, then um, the baseball player, I forget I, his, uh, football player. What's his name? It was like a revolving door of hosts yeah but there was a football player th there was a football player and then literally after the resignation of the executive producer because of some allegations also cancellation at, well, also cancellation the i think oh this is gonna bother me i get again after these messages we'll be right back bum, bum, bum. uh jeopardy 
post 2021. I just want to make sure because I'm, oh my God, this is going to bother me. This is going to bother me. Vamp, vamp like you've never vamped before. <laughs> vamp like I've never vamped before. I mean, we could just talk about Maya Bialik and how she's doing a really good job this year. And, and ultimately, after all these cancellations occurred, she took over. And but she should be canceled too, according to some people on the. What? Why are we canceling? You know what? That's a 2022 me problem. 2021 <laughs> me right now is live, laugh, loving with Maya Bialik. I will both say that Jeopardy is not the same. Meow, meow, blossom, 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 blossom is the uh, uh, anti vaxxer. <gasps> Don't wait, wait, what that makes no sense. She's like a scientist, scientist, yeah, but she doesn't believe her kids should get vaccinated. Oh, fucking my embolic. I'm already triggered now. We need to, okay, Jeopardy, Jeopardy's <laughs> just triggered me this whole year. So and this is not being rectified yet. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, former Green Bay Packers uh, NFL. He was the uh, guest host during the run of guest hosts that they had. Uh, he was a front runner because a lot of people liked him. But then at the, at the end, after they named the replacement, it, was, it turned out that he had lied about his vaccination status and he was an anti-vaxxer as well. So they're like, well, we're not going to give it to him anymore. <sighs> But it, it, gives, it gives the credence to this. And this is where I'm going with this, with this line of statements. Cancel culture became a massive thing in 2021. It sure did. seems like everyone who did something wrong or said something from Chet Hanks to Blossom, they got canceled really quickly. But we give a pass to some. Does that spill over to 2022, do you think? hundred percent. People are going to be hypocritical no matter where we are. <laughs> and speaking of cancel culture, segueing into my next entertainment topic, Justin Timberlake finally decided to open his goddamn mouth 17 years too late to say, y'all, sorry, it was me. I was the reason Janet Jackson's nipple was shown in the Super Bowl. I didn't tell her about it. Yet Janet's still not allowed to perform at the Super Bowl. And Justin has gone back. So, Justin, thank you for taking the blame 17 years too fucking late, right when all this stuff about Britney started coming out and people really started hopping on, which we're not there yet in the free Britney debacling. Uh, you were trying to save your ass because you knew all this shit was going to come out with Britney Spears and you were trying to be like, no, it was me. I did this and I'm so sorry to Britney and I'd be a friend to her. Go fuck yourself. We are canceling Justin Timberlake. But he decided to come out 17 years later and apologize. Like, dude, it was so, like, everyone said, we already done knew that. Yeah. Like, it was, thank it, you for it, confirming. It's like when Kevin Spacey came out and said, yes, I'm gay. <laughs> we all knew that. <laughs> you don't need to come out the day that you apologize for molesting boys. Yeah, but. which, that, that was, that was, mm. anyways. Kevin. That's that's 2019. Justin. That's 2019 entertainment rundown. Yeah, for real. And still in April, because that happened in April. Jeez. You know what else? The, another celebrity decided to come out in April. Colton Underwood, our first gay bachelor, except he was not gay on the show, and then proceeded to stalk this poor girl named Cassie afterwards which also was in the early part of 2021 and then got blackmailed because people, someone found out he was gay and then decided to come out. And that was one of those where people were like, yay, good job on coming out. Um, you also stalked a girl and like put a tracker on her car. So like, should we really, like you have answers. You have things should we really answer give you a primetime special on Netflix just because you stalk somebody? No. But we did Which, because we I'm do not. that in this world. Like I'm, I'm waiting for the Kevin Spacey freaking uh, Netflix series. Like him apologizing to everyone. Like, at what point of time do we have to just throw up our hands and say enough's enough? If you do something stupid, you don't get rewarded for it at all. Like, 
I'm happy he's living his best life. I'm not going to lie. I did watch the show because my husband was curious and I was curious. Like, yeah, it was fine, but it was so produced. And like, it was so, like, he just kept, like, you know, he didn't answer for anything. There was one scene where I was like, finally, someone fucking gave him some shit for it, where he sat down with friends of his that were also Cassie's friends. And they basically, and he was like, I'm sorry, I should have texted you because they just found out that he was gay from his 90 minutes with Robin Roberts. And they were like, it would have been nice for a text. Also, by the way, you're a fucking asshole for what you put Cassie through and you need to own that shit. Like he's not, like he keeps apologizing, but he's not like, I don't know, like you need to really show with actions that you've changed. Like I get it. And I hear you when you say, you know, coming out is difficult. As a gay man, coming out is difficult. But I also did not stalk somebody and put a tracker on someone's car. So the fact that he's using that kind of like as a, well, you know, with the church, like, again, I was Roman Catholic, like fire, brimstone, all that shit. Didn't put a tracker and like do that. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that in 2022, we get some growth from this man as opposed to some I was because I'm I'm ready to cancel him. Like he's getting a lot of positive press for this coming out, Colton. We'll see. Cancel him. Cancel him. Cut ready. Him I'm ready. I'm gonna cut. I'm canceling him right now on the show, the Cross Border Interview Podcast, uh, airing December seventeenth, uh, December sixteenth. Sorry, fifth sixteenth, two thousand twenty-one. We are officially canceling Colton. Colton, what is, is this the one now? cancellation you want to do, or are you going to wait for my next one to do a cancellation? Oh, oh no, we're canceling Justin Timberlake. We're just <laughs> like canceling yeah, Colton. Um, Chet Hanks is canceled now too. Like we're oh, canceled. He, he done been canceled. Blossom's canceled. <laughs> All right, P. Blossom. Um, and moving right into May and continuing apparently the cancel train that I'm starting with this entertainment topics. Well, I'm not canceling, but you will. I am. My girl Megan and my guy Harry sat down with Oprah <laughs> to tell nope. all nope. the tea on the royal family. No, this they, is an entertainment news. We no. needed to, this had to come up. Are you kidding no, me? This is where we're going to fight. No. We're team okay. Megan and we are team Harry. Okay. Let's be honest. They sat down with Oprah and they were all like, hey, hey, Oprah, I'm I'm Gumby and I'm I'm Eeyore and we like to talk. We're going to tell you stories about how we felt during the time in the, the House of Windsor, but we're not going to name names because that would be wrong because we don't name names. We're just going to allege and then everyone's going to make a media firestorm out of the whole thing. And then, oh no, Gumby. Come on, David, we're going to go do some great things. Um, I don't like how hard you're coming right now for my girl, Megan, and my boy, Harry. It was like, get out. They had to get out of that royal family. But if they but had they to did get out. The queen wasn't racist. They just no, heavily implied no, that the king no, was racist. No, no, they did not They said say the that. queen was. No. That's what I said. They said the queen was not racist. No, they, said they did grandma not. Grandma wasn't the they, one. They, they said that it was a senior member of the royal family. And then yeah. Robin Roberts afterwards, the day after on the on the CBS morning show said, well, I chatted with them and they said it wasn't the Queen and the Phillips. Then why didn't say they say that themselves? Why didn't they say that themselves? Want to know why? Because they're chicken shit and they don't want to scare anyone off because they'd rather because get the free bubbles. Because Charles is going to be king. We need to take Charles down. No, we don't. I like Charles. I don't like Camilla. I don't God like save, Camilla or Charles. God save the king. God save the queen. Bless. No, see this, we're going to fight and it was going to be about this. And I knew the minute I put down this tell-all, which we had to, it was one of the biggest news stories of the year. No, it wasn't. I knew we were going to, yes, it was. Are you kidding me? No, it wasn't. Are you kidding me? This immediately jumped to my head. And then I texted friends to see like, hey, what are some of the big news stories of the year? Every single person texted me back, oh, you can't forget Harry and Meghan. Yeah, because you're Americans and Americans think everything British, British crowd is amazing. Hence why we have 19 seasons of The Crown because you can't get enough of it, you freaking Americans. Yeah, that's right. And yes, I'm... you invited me onto this podcast for my American opinion. 
Anyway. So Megan and Harry oh. <laughs> spilled the tea, passed the crumpets, and sent and I got sent to Duke night. of Edinburgh to an early grave. R.I.P. Philip. The Duke of Edinburgh is that's his name. Okay. R.I.P. Phil. We do not say Phil in this household. <laughs> On this podcast, we use their royal regal names, and it is Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, or nothing at all. <laughs> Love that journey. <laughs> now, as we are about to leave May, we have another cancellation. <laughs> the Golden Globes got pulled from TV because of a lack of diversity in the Hollywood Foreign Press. Did it? Did that happen in May? I thought that happened in like it was May. February. No, it was decided in May because I looked it up because I was super curious. Yeah, it was May. Oh wow, I'm actually very shocked with that. They, because it happened in the Golden Globes aired in like what March or April this year or something like that. Uh, yes, that's right. Because it didn't happen in January because of the whole, and it was a really bad uh, telecast of Amy Poehler and Tina Fey on two separate coasts. Drunk. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. And yeah, so they are pulled because of a lack of diversity in the Hollywood foreign press, but. Which is in a teeny <laughs> bit, teeny, teeny bit of looking forward to 2022, this is apparently the most diverse, diverse uh, group for the Hollywood Foreign Press or diverse season or graduating class or whatever they call it. Um, they've already gone on record as saying it's the most diverse. So, and oh, me over here being cynical said, what, y'all had three Black people this year? My, 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 my thing is, my thinking is, that's like a kid getting his hand caught in the cookie jar. And the next day say, hey, look, mom, I didn't put my hand in the cookie jar. Just because exactly. you, it, just because you say you've done something doesn't make everything good. Just like Colton Underwood, hey, I'm gay. No, you still put a tracer on a girl. You stalked her. It's Fast. like it's like RuPaul. Hey, trans women aren't women. They should not be able to compete on my show. And now we're going to give it to a trans woman. I'm sorry, but you don't get a participation award for fucking up and then doing the right thing afterwards. You do the right thing out of the gate and then you get everything done better afterwards. You don't fuck it up. Literally, RuPaul's motto, don't fuck it up and he, her, whatever you want to call them, fucked it up on that one. We praising the Lord over here, people. Woo! I mean, facts, full facts. Like, oh, we need some in 2022. Ooh, what fucking year am I going to? In 2022. 2012. We need <laughs> apocalypse in my, my apocalypse. God, can tour. we go back to 2012? Britney released a whole new album. Like, I, anyways. <laughs> Barack Obama was in the White House. <laughs> in 2022, have... we need lasting change. I want lasting change and I want actual concrete action being taken. I don't want none of this, oh, ooh, no, I want, no. We need change, action. I need, like, I want to see the evidence, period. And we're not going to get that. I, I don't know. I'm hoping. I'm going to, that's my New Year's resolution to see lasting change happen from these celebrities. You, you just said it like the most ironic thing lasting change from celebrities. I'm expecting it now. Um. So we, we head into July, which is the big, well, not big, but big for me, big wow. news story. Scarlett Joe and oh, Marvel. Yeah, I totally forgot about this. Scarlett Johansson and uh, Marvel and Disney Plus all decided that they were going to be done with each other. Scarlett Black Widow had just uh, had come out on only on streaming plus after like months of months of months of months of months of delays. And Disney Plus Kevin Feige finally said, okay, we're just going to put it on streaming and that's it where we have to release it because the continuity of the story needs to be released before certain of the other shows. 
Scarlett Johansson said, well, if you're going to do that after it came out, after it made some money, they she decided to sue Disney because her contract was on, on, predicated on her making money at the box office because she would have got some money from the box office, depending on how much it made. And, well... It did make much money, but she didn't make much money either because we all forgot about the whole streaming thing. So uh, this came out, had Disney and uh, Scarlett Johansson have come to an agreement. They're back on good terms. They're working together now, from what I understand. Yep. Uh, but it has now changed the entertainment world of contracts. They're now going to have to deal with streaming services. Which is good. I mean, like, good for her. She stood her ground. I mean, she went crawling back to the mouse, but I mean, she's making so much fucking money. Why would you not figure it, it out so you can go back? It, it, exactly. Plus, at the same time, it's the mouse or nothing because literally, there's no, there's Pretty not, much. there's not many major movie studios out there. Paramount, okay, doesn't put out good quality shit anymore. Sony's got like one foot in the ground right now. You take that back about Paramount. Paramount Plus needs to release Evil in Canada, and then I'll. That's be okay. why you're for sure. <laughs> Paramount's not putting out good stuff. Means I think I can't see my television program. Yeah, yeah, I said it. I said you it. What you were saying? I'm like, excuse you. Are you not about to come from Miss Paramount over here? Sony. Sony hasn't done anything good since their deal with uh, Marvel, um, and I just like who else is there? Apple. Like what? What has HBO, Apple... Warner okay. Brothers? Okay, yet again, HBO hasn't put anything out good in Canada, so let's not put that out there. Oh, uh, <laughs> so apparently, if you don't exist in Canada, Chris Brown wants nothing to do with you, and you put out garbage. We That's what not, I'm hearing. We have known each other for what 19 months since the start, almost the start of the pandemic, and you finally got around to that realization, Michael. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot about that. But Scarlett <laughs> Johansson and Disney got into that fight. I was literally racking my brain for a 10th one, and that's why Jeopardy popped up, which led to a slew of cancellation. <laughs> yeah. And then you're not even you're only doing those? What about August? No, no, no. I have I have a couple more. Okay. I have three more that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Um the baby was de canceled. Baby and pulled from so the baby is uh, a rapper totally and insert what? random music of the baby now no if you want to no he's canceled you might okay. not want to after we cancel him okay. or after I tell you why he was canceled okay what well, was so the baby was de canceled because he got on stage at a music festival and said um, my fans aren't those gay fans sucking dick in the parking lot my fans are classy. And everyone was like, excuse me, who? And then he got on Instagram like five days later and was like, I apologize, I shouldn't have said that. And it was one of those like notes app. Notes app was the trend of 2021. Um, you could take a screenshot of your notes app, tweet it, you could Instagram it. We loved notes app in 2021, trend alert. Um, <laughs> and people have not bought it. And he got pulled from every music festival he was on. He got pulled from any potential future tours for a while. I mean, he's trying to tour right now, but like no ain't nobody going to be buying tickets. No one, he's still canceled. He's not selling. I mean, you can go buy, look at the baby's tour right now. There's tickets galore. Like he got to canceled and it was one of those where people are still kind of not okay with, like people were like very pissed. Understandably so. I was very pissed. And then in keeping, the, God, every single one of these is a cancel train, I'm now realizing. Apparently cancellation was also a trend that I was very involved in in 2021 because my next cancellation, Travis Scott done killed 10 people. Remember? Allegedly. <laughs> oh, yes. You have to allegedly. We don't want to get sued around here. Allegedly killed 10 people. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. At the, the Travis Scott. Oh, no, you go. I was going to say for those for those <laughs> better than me talking because I, I I get myself into trouble when I talk on these shows. <laughs> um, for those who don't remember, uh, Travis Scott was uh, 
what is a singer. Uh, he is good friends with the Kardashians. And in Dallas, if you listen to our, I think it was our November uh, entertainment rundown, we talked about this in length, but there was a concert in Texas. Da- music the, festival. Music festival in Texas, where he was one of the headliners, if not the headliner, correct? It was, it's his music festival. So it was the Astro World Music Festival. So yeah, he was the headliner, but he was like, the main person okay and uh they sold the tickets that they were allowed to sell according to the city of the houston or dallas dallas no dallas 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 a city in a city in texas they sold the the amount of tickets that they were allowed and they in uh, put the this the this group of people this large group of people in a small area in a parking lot basically and As you can imagine, if you put a lot of sardines in a small area, you are destined to have some suffocations, some people where there are uh, bad uh, movement space, very close, and 10 people at that concert, I think eight at the concert and then two at the hospital, uh, died because of... Uh, exhaustion, uh, trampling, a lot of things happening. Uh, Travis Scott went on stage, was on stage, and continued to sing while people were trying to tell people that this was happening. People were dying, people were injured, and they continued the show. An ambulance was seen in a social media post trying to get to people, and Travis Scott just continued to sing, allegedly killed these people, as said, allegedly. And it, it came down to him going after the concert, away with i think it was chloe kardashian or kimmy or jimmy or whatever the cur whatever caitlin kardashian no definitely not caitlin it was kylie kylie the lips so kylie and him were out partying afterwards and they were all on their social media feeds partying as people were dying in the hospital and This became the end of Travis Scott's basically career for a few years. I'm assuming he'll probably come back because Chris Jenner will do something. And he got pulled from Coachella. He got pulled pulled from from everything, just like the baby. He lost the bookings. Yeah, he lost a lot of bookings. And there's a lot of people who are going after the Kardashians right now because of their role, not in, not of playing, but of celebrating after the fact that people were dying and posting it and being very rude. I I, I, I want to use a, I want to use a worse word here, but being very problematic, problematic in 2021, when people are dying, you don't go out and put on social media, greatest night in Houston ever. You just don't. So Travis Scott, is probably going to be gone out of the limelight for a few years. He's going to reemerge like Taylor Swift and release about 9,000 new albums in a year. (laughs) Which I thought that happened, like her and Scooter Braun happened this year. 2020. That happened like December of 2020. And I'm so mad because I was like, this like defined this year, but I can't talk about it because it's last year. I just did, but oops. But we can talk about the fact that she's released all these new albums, right? Because that was yeah. her thing in 2021 was they got the, the big fight in December. And then this year she was like, okay, we're going to release new actual Taylor's versions of our songs. And she has basically- She told Scooter Braun to go fuck himself. And Scooter Braun- Allegedly. <laughs> I think we can say that actually happened. <laughs> I think we could all say that. Um, what else? Oh, Kim and Kanye. To... Kim and Kanye got it. Like, got divorced. I <laughs> or... was gonna put that, but I'm like, I can't be that kind of homosexual. <laughs> I will be. I will be. Kim Yay! Unhe- Kim Yay broke up, and then they both showed up looking like Dementors to the Met Gala. Yeah. Kim and Kanye got divorced. Tom and Zendaya got together. Like seriously, we love that. I love yeah. it. Dude. And then oh, Camilla, Camilla and Sean Mendez splitsville. 
Yes, I heard about that. My yeah. husband's very happy that his boyfriend is back on the market. <laughs> oh my God, God. <laughs> um, lastly, my very most important, most needed, most iconic of all the entertainment news. Britney Spears is free! Okay, I'm going to go make a sandwich right now. Let Michael just rant about this for the next 10 minutes. Go for it. Go. This for it. was needed. This was needed. I, I'm, I'm not even sorry. A lot of people made a lot of money off this girl this year, though. We need to talk about the fact there was how many documentaries? Like 10? Yeah. That came out. A lot of people made a lot of money off of this whole free Britney thing. It worked, but... Oh, when's Britney getting some of that money? Because y'all just profited off of my girl who was fighting for her freedom. And she, she, she's not holding back these days, eh? No, she went after Diane Sawyer to that yesterday and I was living. <laughs> I was like, wow, Britney's just, Britney's back, bitch. <laughs> she is burning down bridges left and right. Well, and Jamie Spears the other day tried to go to the court, to the judge on Monday, I want to say. And was like, um, Brittany has not managed money in 13 years. I think we should have someone like me in there to make sure she controls it. And the judge said, go fuck yourself. You're not touching her money. And denied him his request. He tried it. Jamie is trying it because he's living his ass on the line of poverty. And you know what? That is, that is way too good for that man. We do not like, we are not Brit- Jamie Spears stands. We hate Jamie. Jamie Spears Period. canceled. <laughs> Done. <laughs> R.I.P. to Jamie Spears. So to what does 2022 look like for Britney? Relaxing? Um, does she care? Break. Does she care anymore? Is she gonna actually I mean, re- is she gonna release music she wants to release? So this is what I think is gonna happen. And this is all hypothetical. This is all allegedly. I do not have inside knowledge. If it happens, then you'll be a god among the gays. <laughs> I think. Homegirl's going to take a break. She's basically been forced to work for so long. She doesn't want to work. She wants to, she wants to relax. She wants to own money and drive cars and marry her boyfriend and, and have a kid with him and be with her friends and her family, friends that Jamie has basically refused to let her see for 13 years. And if she did, if he did, it was all supervised. I know her and Cher were on the Twitter talking about how they wanted to go on to like, Greece and and be on the beaches there and drink champagne to get like she wants to live her life she's going to go on probably a little bit of a spending spree she's then going to realize that her money is getting a little lighter than she's comfortable with and then she's going to go I really want to make music because Britney ultimately loves to sing and loves to perform so, so like she okay. wants to do it on her terms here's here's the ultimate question here's sure. the ultimate question who does she duet with who does she collab with? Well, because you know who she's not collaborating with because she's Timberlake. giving a whole list of Justin Timberlake. She came for Christina Aguilera for not standing up for her. Basically, if you did not say I support Britney Spears, she has gone on a rampage of, of cancellation of your terrible person. She came for Christina Aguilera. And you know what? I was like, snaps for you, girl. <laughs> like, so, she's like, burning does, bridges. Does Cher become her like mama? Do not, <laughs> do not tease me with that. I hope so. Like, I think, I think I'm going to be very real. I think just a solo Britney album, like an unplugged, like circus style album where she just kind of tells the story, I think will sell. Like, Oh, I agree. But I think it's, who does she trust as the producer, right? That's where I'm, does she go with her or ones that she used during her shit show of the last 10 years? Or does she rely on someone else to tell them, this is who I use? I think she, she had a producer that she really liked before this conservatorship happened. The issue was daddy didn't like the producer. So I bet you she uses him. Or she just self-produces it. I mean, Everyone's, Adele does that. Yeah. Let's not talk. And about I, that. well, Adele's twenty-five album, despite the fact that you do not like it, is culturally one of the. You don't like Adele. I like right? I like some of Adele. I think twenty-five is culturally one of the most 
brilliant albums ever created. Or maybe she goes and calls up her friend Beyonce and says, whoever did Lemonade, I need you to do this. If, if, if Naya, Naya Riviera did oh. Adele, I like Adele. So you like Glee? <laughs> I like the songs of Glee. I don't like Glee. So what I'm hearing is Glee needs to be rebooted in 2022 like Ryan Murphy is currently trying to do. Okay. With Leah Michelle. Okay, nope, not anymore. Wait, did she, did she get canceled in 2021 or 2020? Oh, let's check. Let's check. I literally, I don't know why cancellation is popular. Trend alert. I literally just Googled almost a year ago. 2020. June Damn. 2020. I know. But she came She's been at- quiet a real long time, though. Yeah, Good she for did. her. She listened. She but listened she, when we she, said, go fuck yourself. She, she reared her ugly head this year when uh, the casting of Wicked came out. And everyone was like, ha ah, ah. That wasn't her fault. People brought her name into it. I know. That's what I meant. Then everyone went, ha ha, you didn't get it. And she came out for the Spring Awakening thing, too. But, like, you kind of had to. She was the original cast. And despite the fact that she's a monster, she is fucking brilliant. Each their own. Beauty's in the eye um, that's, of the beholder. Yes. That is all of the news that I kind of felt the need to bring up. Did I miss anything that you really? want to bring up? Um, we can talk about the Fast and the Furious franchise how Vin Diesel and Dwayne The Rock Johnson finally buried the hatchet. Oh. Uh, yeah, they were fighting for the longest time because Vin Diesel or The Rock did uh, Hobbs and Shaw and Vin Diesel was like, it's all about family. Man, I like family. <laughs> and now- we need to stop coming for The Rock, the Dwayne Johnson. That's true. Uh, I'm just trying, I'm just looking through my list right now. Uh, Gina Carano got booted off. Oh, Mando- yeah, she got canceled and fired. She Sorry, got, girl. And now rehired. She got rehired for Mandalorian. She got rehired. <gasps> Ooh, Twitter's gonna be mad. It's like the whole Disney thing, right? Disney cancels you for like 10 weeks, and they're like, okay, we can't find it. And when the good. press dies down, they yeah. put you back in. Look it, I, I did good things and I'm happy. Yeah. She didn't. Um, she went and did a Ben Shapiro movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. Shang-Chi came out. Uh, first Asian uh, star-studded cast of Marvel. And both the both main characters got canceled within the first like week of it being released because of stupid things they said. I literally now need to go and make a t-shirt that says, Trend Alert 2021, <laughs> you're canceled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Grammys, or sorry, not the Grammys, the Tonys finally happened, where the winner of the um, best male performance happened, and it did go to the only person in the category. I'm surprised you didn't mention that. <laughs> I'm pretending he don't exist. <laughs> Again, terrible human being, fucking brilliant, and it makes me mad. Yeah. Uh, Dune came out. The Dune series is all relaunching so that's happy everyone's happy hanky dory day that they actually did a good version of it i didn't like it but that's well that's movies are we jumping to movies now and oh i'm still i'm just i'm just talking about are you still doing the news caitlin jenner decided that she wanted to be governor of uh california when the recall election happened is that political though that's political and entertainment she's an entertainment person is she it's like I'm Arnold, not entertained. It's like it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger becoming. Oh wow, Arnold Schwarzenegger becoming, right? It's just oh no. I'm just going Ooh. through my list. Uh, you've covered off a lot of things that I've already wanted to talk about. Dang you! Listen, I'm nothing if not predictable. You certainly are. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Like the biggest, uh, the best, uh, like the big. TV shows. We'll talk about that later in a few minutes. Sure but will. Overall, like I think it was a pretty packed, and I think you summed it up right. 2021 was canceled. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm here for it though. I'm not gonna lie. It was one of those moments where I'm like, some people just I don't just dis- I don't disagree with a lot of the people they canceled though. Me either. 
me either. Like, I, I don't see a big, like, oh my God, that shouldn't have happened. Most of it, it, most of it I didn't care about either. And that's the other thing, right? Like most of the people like, like the baby, the baby. <laughs> like I, I never heard of this. So I never heard of that person. So my husband is in the music industry. So it's just a name that I know very well because we hear all the music cancellations. I know anything that happens in music, like as it's happening, I basically see it happen in front of me and we discuss it a lot. Journalism is in crisis, and our mission here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast is to tell the story that isn't being told. It is vital that independent journalism survives with the rise of fake news. Every penny that is contributed to the Cross Border Interview Podcast goes to help continue our work to tell people's stories. All of our content is produced and edited by our team. The Cross Border Interview Podcast provides entirely free content, and we will never hide stories behind paywalls. By supporting a new model of journalism, our listeners, like you, are supporting real, independent journalism. Consider making a monthly donation via our Patreon account, or make a one-time donation by Interact eTransfer. Now, let's get back to the show. Welcome back. That was another great, uh, great, great commercial. What a produced, wonderful advertisement. Produced and edited by Miranda Brown Associates. I, I'm quite, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, quite I'm quite pleased with that. Um, so we are going to be talking about the top 10 movies of 2021 by I'm Michael canceling Andrew. that voice. <laughs> okay. Retire it to Florida. <laughs> Retire it to Florida. So we're going to talk about the big, the top ten movies of 2021 as uh, as decided upon by Michael and Chris. And before we talk about this, I should note that I don't know Michael's top ten list. He does not know my top ten list. So he is going to be hearing mine, and I'm going to be hearing his as we say them. So we're going to go in reverse order for this one because I want to make... Mine are in no particular order. I could not do like a, this was the best and this was the worst because like I couldn't. So this is literally just 10 movies I enjoyed as like a top 10. Okay, never mind. I couldn't. I could not rank them. Okay, I tried. I just, I just want to pull up my list right now. I should have done that during the commercial break, but Michael and I had a, a fight over Adele and I don't know, other things that we usually fight about. <laughs> he vetoed my hat. Well, show the hat. Let's show the hat. For those on YouTube. We let's... love a good hat. We so for those hat. who can't see what that is, so what is the hat? So the new kids on the block, whom longtime listeners should know that I absolutely love, have released a, it's called the Blockhead Bedsheet Collection. And it is a series of their old like bed sheets that you had in the 80s, maybe the 90s. It's that same print that they've now turned into a series of home goods. We've got dish towels. We've got fun hats. We have, you can get bed sheets for your adult bed. I low-key considered buying some for myself. Of course you um, did. Um, of course you did. <laughs> they have ornaments. They have anything you want in this fabulous print. So this is a bucket hat. I'm low-key obsessed with it. Um, we got it in the mail today. My husband and I, he got a package and a little, a little package moment. And so we're obsessed. I actually low-key am obsessed with this. It's so good that the, uh, the emergency services have to come get it from you because we all just heard the emergency service or someone whistling. I live in the country. Why is there traffic like this? <laughs> While I'm recording? <sighs> You're welcome. Wow. You're welcome. Apparently. Okay. So let's let, let's go two and two each. Let's start with the two and two each. So two top movies Fabulous. that you thought of in 2021, what were they? Two top or bottom or just, or just let, we'll let, start from the bottom of my list. Yeah, let's start at the bottom of your list. So, so uh, the I've first heard... two movies that you want to talk about are what? Everybody is talking about Jamie, which came out in September. I really liked it. I really liked it. I thought in terms of like a fun movie musical, 
It was great. It did not feature James Corden, which we all know is a huge plus. I think for what it was, it was a lot of fun. It made me laugh. It made me it made me happy. And you know what? There was pandemic raging. I needed things that made me happy. Next on my list, Zack Snyder's Justice League, which came out in March. Four hours of the Justice League, which I was here for. I, I wish that this was the real version that instead of the one we got, which yeah. was not good. I really like this. And I think that they should fire everyone involved with the DC and just have Zack Snyder take it back over. But that's just me. Yeah, they're not going to do that, though. No, Well, no, they've invested too much money in these other people. So for me, I will say that Zack Snyder's Justice League was on my list. It was near the top of my list because as a Marvel, as a DC fan, as a comic book fan, I was actually excited for this because it was one of those things that uh, the holy grail of DC movies, you're like, okay, I've heard about it. You want to see it. You know, it's there. It's like the, like the, the candy is so out of reach that you want to touch it, but you don't want to, because you're always afraid that when you watch something that you, that is so highly, ex, like so, so, so much expectation around it, that it's going to blow your mind. You're like, okay, this either has to be really, really fucking good or it's going to be a complete bomb. And I was scared when this originally came out because I was like, okay, four hours is a long time to sit and watch a movie. But I did, and I was happy. I was- In one sitting? Yeah, the whole thing. We did it in two days. We got about two hours in and my husband and I both were like, I'm tired. Uh, We need to finish this tomorrow. This is, because it's one of those you have to watch every minute of it. You can't just like- passively watch it and so both of us were like okay i can't pay attention for much longer i need to like we'll pause we'll come back so that was one of mine and then in the same realm if we're sticking with uh dc suicide squad the suicide Squad. really i liked it i like james gunn though i i'm a big james gunn fan and i was a big fan of the original suicide squad with uh david ayers will smith with Will Smith and Margot Robbie, but D- uh, David Ayers was the director. And now there's, since Justice League came out, there's the whole release the Ayers cut of Suicide Squad because WB has the tendency to fuck things over when it comes to comic book movies. So I, it was one of my top, it was, I wouldn't say it was my top, top movie, but it was near the top of my list for like top 10. Cool. I would say it gave, it gave me good feelings afterwards. And then there's not a lot of movies that I can say, okay, I like that or I don't like that. But Suicide Squad was, the Suicide Squad was one of my second. What, what's the next two for you? Um, this next two, you're going to fight me and I'm already aware. I really liked Free Guy, which came out in August. And I, I really liked The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It, that came out in June. Oh my God, wait, you have Free Guy on there too? I thought you didn't like it. I didn't, but it's still better than a lot of the other movies I saw this year. I I really liked it. I like Ryan Reynolds. I think it was a fun movie. It's what Ready Player One, I feel, should have been. Um, It was was a lot of fun. It was a really great, entertaining, whimsical movie, which, again, I just wanted to be happy in 2021. It was a hard year. And then The Conjuring 3, I, I... I'm a huge sucker for the Conjuring movies and the Conjuring universe. And even though The Nun is a terrible movie, it's still one of my favorite horror movies, just being affiliated with the universe. And as much as this wasn't super scary, which if I was to rank them, this would probably be number 10 on my list. Um, And all the scares we did see were in the trailer. I really enjoyed it. And I think as like a storytelling device. All of them were. All of them were. (laughs) What? All of them. All of them were. All of the scares were in the trailer. Literally every single one of them. All of them. Every single one. Literally compressed a two and a half hour movie down to 22 minutes. And I could have just went, okay. Which is why I won't watch trailers anymore for movies that I'm really excited to see because it, it, I just, I find that it's not worth my sanity. Um, I really like the movie and I think it's a storytelling piece for where they're going to take the Conjuring universe because now everybody got to have a cinematic universe and Oddly enough, Conjuring Cinematic Universe is one of the 
highest gross, not highest grossing, um, makes the most money, I want to say, because it's is- so low budget to film it. It's, it costs them like 100K to film the thing and they make two, three, four million. They've made more money than they intended or they put into it. So it's considered one of the most successful cinema franchises. So they're just going to keep pumping these movies out. I don't think the quality has gotten shitty. I think if you like the Conjuring universes, you're going to like the movies. If you don't like the Conjuring universe, you're going to like maybe one or two of them, but they're like the nun, you're going to just be disappointed. So for me, because I like the, the universe as a whole, it was a good linchpin movie. I think for where they want to go and the story they want to tell and creating like a general big bad villain for the whole thing, it sets it up really nicely for like a Thanos level villain for Ed and Lorraine to kind of fight towards. I can see it. Okay. How about okay. you? So again, with you, Free Guy was on my list, but one that I've watched it twice since it came out. I'm not the happiest that I've watched it twice, but it, it has grown on me. And that is Prom. That came out in 2020. No, it didn't. It came out this year, didn't it? Nope, it came out in 2020. No. It was December of 2020. I know it was December of 20 because my friend Nico was in it and we watched it and we FaceTimed with Nico while we were watching it. Um, okay, well, that sucks then. Then I'll go to my next one then because that... that oh, I'm um, sorry. I'm sorry to ruin your top 10. Melissa McCarthy, to me, can do no wrong. Are you about to say Thunder Force? I am. Get out. I like Melissa McCarthy, though. You liked Thunder Force? I did. Octavia Spencer and uh, Melissa McCarthy. I think they're good. I think they're good actors. I think it was a good story. I think it was funny. I think it was one of those ones that I could have watched and I could have just been like, okay, this is a good veg movie. I could sit there and I could just watch it. I don't think there was a lot of good movies this year. So I'm picking ones that I, 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 I enjoyed. I laughed. I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. I'm gooped, I'm gagged, I'm plucked, I'm pressed. You didn't like it, did you? I, like you said, I didn't, I didn't think it was amazing. I didn't hate it. I'm curious, because again, now everybody wants to fucking franchise. And I feel like it did too much of that. Let's set up for a franchise in case we get one. And I just, I wish that it was one of those. We, <laughs> no, I just. In case we get one, here's, here's crossing the fingers. Like, I just don't necessarily want a franchise for every movie. And I get that you like, it makes money. But if you want to do something like, just fucking give me a movie that tells a story that ends like, or plan for a trilogy and like so what do you're, it better what you're, rather than a half-assed franchise. So what you're saying is you really, 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 really love Cinderella. That's not on my list. She's gone. I, I She canceled too? I guess we've canceled Camilla Cabello actually this year. In the season of cancellation, she got canceled. Why did she get canceled? Because Normani came forward and said Camilla Cabello was super racist. The good times. The good. Yeah. Okay, what, what's the next two? I think the next one's going to shock you for me. Jungle Cruise, which came out in, what month was that? July. I was going to say July. And Tick, Tick, Boom, which came out in November. Um, Jungle Cruise, super fun, super whimsical. Uh, The Rock was in it. Emily Blunt, who I adore, was in it. Fun story. Uh, It was was what the Haunted Mansion wishes it was. Um, The Haunted Haunted Mansion Mansion with Eddie. Have you not seen the Eddie Murphy Haunted Mansion? If so, don't watch it. I'm not recommending it. This is what Eddie Murphy wishes his movie was. And then Tick, Tick, Boom was a super niche, like any kind of like hardcore musical theater person that watched that, I just, I just was radiating joy because it was so many like little Easter eggs that like hardcore theater people would know. And like, they had all these actors that did cameos from various Broadway shows. And it was so fun watching that with my husband and being like, oh my God, that's Andre De Shields. That's Philippa Sue. That is, um, uh, what's his name? Slipped my mind. There were so many. Like even they had Little Red, the gal that played Little Red Riding Hood in the original production of Into the Woods. She was in one of the scenes, and it was so cool seeing these people and these actors and 
and seeing this whole story unfold. And, and low-key Vanessa Hudgens, brilliant singer. Andrew Garfield, who I'm not usually a huge fan of, brilliant performer, embodied Jonathan Larson, looks like Jonathan Larson. I really liked it. And I'm a huge fan of Tick, Tick, Boom as a score. I think as a story, it's like, meh. But I think what, and I hate Lin-Manuel Miranda, I think he act, directed the fuck out of this movie. I think him, his directing is, was so tight and so brilliant in this. I will not be surprised if he gets a Academy Award nomination for his directing. He probably won't though. He probably won't because it's Lin-Manuel Miranda, but I- He'll probably get like score or something. Well, he did, this is Jonathan Larson's score. I know, but adapted screenplay, I don't know. Some, something it was brilliant they, they'll give them something but they they're gonna give if there's gonna be a musical give it given a director's uh position it's gonna be steven spielberg for west side story 100 uh, percent, which i've not seen it yet but i've heard rave reviews i i've heard different so interesting anyway so again you're next to? speaking of uh canceled culture yet again the main character in west side story got canceled as well ansel <laughs> Englehart, yeah yeah we don't mention his name in the show <laughs> Oh, I mean, (laughs) A-E. A-E. My next two, uh, Black Widow. I liked it. I liked it. And one that you might actually be shocked that I'm about to say, and I think she's actually, I I, I will bow down to you because you told me back in, I think it was August, that this was going to happen. Kirsten Stewart, Kristen Stewart is going to get the nomination for Spencer. She's going to get the nomination. She won't win, but she'll get the nomination. Hold on, I'm processing for a second, people. So for as she's processing this, I'm going to say that the other movie that I liked was Spencer, the Diana Spencer movie based with Kirsten Stewart, and her accent was good. She did a good job. I I liked the story. I didn't enjoy the story, but it was okay. I'm processing still. Okay. Um, Have not seen that yet. Thrilled that it is on your list. Thrilled beyond belief. Uh, That is one that I'm planning on watching as it gets closer to the Oscar season. Because I think I agree with you. I've not seen it yet to know enough buzz has gone on saying she's going to get nominated. Same with Gaga for House of Gucci, which I've also not seen. I like to watch the Oscar stuff a little closer to Oscar season, just because I find I go in with a bit of a fresher eyes. I forget the trailers if I've seen them and seeing what actually gets nominated kind of allows me to have a a, a more in-depth look rather than watching potentially a hundred movies for 10 of them to be nominated. That's true. But I'm so thrilled that it's on your list. Well, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I think you were right that she is going to get the nomination for it. I don't think she's going to win it, but I think she's going to get the nomination for it. Yeah, that's probably because her and Gaga are going to split it. And it's going to go to like Jennifer Lawrence for Up in the Clouds or Look Up. I don't look up. I'm so ready to watch that. I've not seen it yet. It's on my list. I actually might watch that tonight after The Masked Singer. Okay. Next two movies. This is eight, seven, and eight. Um, So for me, while we're on Oscars, both these movies came out in February. Both of them were Oscar nominated movies. You are not going to be surprised as I say them because I raved about them since the minute they came out. Uh, Judas and the Black Messiah and the United States versus Billie Holiday. Are they nominated for this year's Oscars or were they last year's Oscars? No, no, no. They were 20. They were the ones that happened this year, the 2021 Oscar yeah. award or 93rd or whatever, whatever Oscars this happened this year. The shitty um, Oscars. Yeah, it was a weird performance. And they did all the songs before rather than during. Um, I loved both these movies. I think they were both so brilliant. I think in looking at the Oscar nominated movies for this year, like as a whole, I I thought about including The Father. I thought about including Minari. I thought about including all these other ones, but in looking at like the movies I truly enjoyed that I would go back and watch again, I had to include these two. I think Judas and the Black Messiah is a brilliant, brilliant storytelling device that really gives you an in-depth look at who Fred Hampton was and does it in a really 
brilliant and respectful way. And then I think United States versus Billie Holiday, I think on her day, her first roll out the gate, acted the fuck out of it. And I think she was the best part of that movie. And I, I think that I'm a little shocked she didn't win the Oscar because she was super brilliant, but it was just such, she, she was just such a, trans, a transcendent force in that movie. Um, and the costumes, it was just, it was brilliant. Like start to finish, like technically amazing. I, I can't stop raving about either of them. So those are on my list. So my next two, and I wouldn't say it's two because this movie is a three-part movie. Came out really? July. Yeah. Are you like you're gooped, gocked, and like you have Fear Street? I'm shook. I had all three parts of Fear Street on it. So re- I remember when I told y'all viewers, your viewers, about when I watched it, and it was this was like, in Ugh. August as well. We talked about it in August. Yeah, I, I, I like the first one. I like the second one. The set, the third one wasn't as good, but it it no. re- it ended the story well, and it it made me want more because now I'm like, okay, what's next year is going to look like? What are they going to do for the next story? Because I, I like are stories. Are they doing like, more? Uh, I think they want to because the ending ended that way. Oh, yeah. So I like movies that do that. I like movies that make you want to come back for more. And when you originally told me about it, I didn't know about it. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll look into it. And when I was watching it i was like oh my god this is good and then i watched the second one we watched it all in one sitting too we watched six hours of fear street and the first one we went oh this is great second one we're like okay twist at the end i didn't see it coming and i love when i don't see things coming and the third one i'm like okay i see what they're trying to do i see what they're trying to they're 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 trying to pack everything in the last movie which is great i i enjoyed it and i was like holy fuck i enjoyed this and I'm an R.L. Stein, Stein fan, so if you've seen my bookshelf, you know that I have all the Goosebump books. I have a few of the Fear Street books. I, I enjoyed it, so I I am I am putting it in my top ten, or and I know it's going to be my top twelve now, but my top ten movies was the Fear Street collection. I liked the first two. I think the third one should have been two movies. I think if they had done more with the sixteen sixty six and spread it out it would have maybe been a stronger film because yeah. that each movie had, as you remember, like the first one was an homage to scream. And the second one was an homage to like Friday the 13th. I wish the, and the third one was an homage to like those, like season the witch, witch yeah. and things like that. And I wish the fourth one was its own. The fourth part was its own movie rather than let's do three and four together. The only thing that I would say that needed to be done better next time was more Jillian Jacobs. I love me my Jillian Jacobs. I think she's an amazing underrated actress. I think she needs her due. And I think she, oh, I think Michael and I are about to have a fight here, but I think Jillian No, Jacobs, no, no, which I was just going to say, which character was she? She was the uh, older girl adult. Oh, obsessed. No, I agree. Hard, hard agree. Yeah, she, no was in, she was in community. She, she is a great, great actress. And when I saw her, I was like, done. I'm excited for this. I'm looking forward to this. And like, hmm, I, I, yeah. So those, so that, and then sticking on to the theme of horror films still, um, the second part of uh, my eight, my ninth, eighth and ninth, seventh and eighth movie is a second part that came out this year, directed by The Office's John Kerensky, starring his wife, Emily Blunt. I haven't the, seen it yet. A Quiet Place 2. If you have not seen this, watch it. It takes the first one and it basically adds on to it and it's so much better. It's so good. I would highly recommend that you watch it. I wanted to watch it, but then I was moving as you and the viewers know. And I didn't have a TV until late September. And so I've basically been trying to catch up to things from between that time. And that was on my list. And we wanted like, a normal size TV because we were using one of my parents that's smaller than my laptop screen just so that we had something to watch. And that's a movie you got to watch on yeah. a screen. And so we, we, it's on our list to watch. I 
desperately want to watch it because I loved the first one and I'm so glad that the second one you you like it and that it makes me want to watch it. So happy. I'm so happy to be blowing your mind with my movie picks this year. I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it. Okay, last two movies, eight their ninth and tenth movies. Which are yours? <laughs> this is where you're gonna hate me. So Godzilla versus if you, King Kong if you came say, out in April. If you say <laughs> the Muppets Haunted House or a Muppets God Hall, no, okay. God no, no. Godzilla versus King Kong came out in April. I I don't know if I talked when I talked with you about this. If I talked about it on the podcast or if I did not. I don't know who I've spoken to about this. It's one of those movies that I can't stop talking about. <laughs> because I just had so much fun watching it. I've watched it six times. And every single time I've watched it has been amazing. It's like the perfect level of like monster fight monster. And like, there's a little bit of story, but like, I just wanted like an hour of monster fighting and I got an hour of monster fighting. And like, we are team King Kong hardcore. King Kong was just trying to do hot girl shit and Godzilla refused to leave King Kong alone. So. Godzilla canceled. Um, and then their little ending, it was just, it was great. It was such a great movie. I enjoyed it more than I probably should have. And it was trash. Like I'm very aware it was trash, but I uh, loved it. And then last one, I got to do my girl Cruella, which came out in May. I think it was, I think it was the best live action Disney movie they've done, period. I think um, it was great. The costumes were great. Have you Acting not seen great. Avengers Endgame? Have you not seen Avengers Endgame? I don't <laughs> count that as like Disney. That's Marvel. Owned by? I know. I'm aware Disney <laughs> owns Marvel. I'm very aware. I'm just saying in terms of like Disney, like classic Disney as a brand. Because like, I think you can, I think we can all agree. Disney has split itself into Disney marvel and star wars yeah as the disney side i think for it is the strongest live action they've ever done i think the script was really tight i think the acting was really great i enjoyed every single piece of it i really really like that movie and everyone i've spoken to when i'm like and they come up they're like oh have you seen Cruella?" i'm like yes i've seen it. like everyone i've spoken to i guess besides chris brown of the cross-border interview podcast I still have not seen the movie. Oh, you haven't? Refuse to see it. Why? Do not like her. Who? Emma Stone. Hold on. We have so much to unpack here. You don't like Emma Stone? Emma Stone was a bad MJ in The Amazing Spider-Man. Well, that's fair, but those movies were terrible anyways. The Amazing Spider-Man movies? Mm, Okay. Um, the only good thing Emma Stone has ever done, only good Do not thing. say the help. Do not God say the no. help. God, no. Thank God. Best movie of hers. Easy A. Yes, agree. I can, watch that, I can watch that movie over and over again just for the line of Stanley Tucci saying, <laughs> told him he was adopted. It was a I love movie. that. And a higher, Emma's, a higher power will burn you for your indecency. <laughs> hmm, Tom Cruise. Girl, I love Easy A as a movie. I think it's a great movie. I love Emma Stone. I actually got to see her on Broadway uh, in a production of Cabaret with Alan Cummings as the MC, and she was Sally Bowles, and it was oh, wow. beloved and brilliant. Oh, wow. I really like her. I think she's a brilliant actress, and I think she's super underrated. Uh-huh. I'm sorry you don't like her. I'm sorry Spider Man ruined Emma Stone for you. I'm really sorry. I'm heartbroken by it. I just haven't seen her. Like, she wasn't good in Hawkman or Hawkeye or whatever the movie was with Michael Keaton. He was, he got, he won the Oscar for it. Or he didn't win it. He was nominated for the Oscar. She was nominated for the Oscar too. In all fairness, I don't like a lot of Emma Stone movies. I think she's brilliant, but I think she signs on to a lot of weird movies, just like Jennifer Lawrence. I don't necessarily love all of the Jennifer Lawrence movies, but I like Birdman. Her. Birdman. Oh, I couldn't. I tried. I couldn't. 
Yeah, it, was, it felt like it was all shot in one one whole. <laughs> thing. Yeah, I can't. Um, so my last two movies. This one might get a little. This this guy should be canceled, but it was actually a good movie, The Tomorrow War. With Chris Pratt on Amazon. Uh, it is basically people from the future come back, back, back to the past and they're like, hey, we need your help because we're all dying and we need to freaking figure out how these aliens are going to die. And it's really good. I like the story. The visual effects were good. I don't like Chris Pratt. He's not a good actor, but it was a good movie. Script was good. Premise was good. And that's what I like it about a movie. And I, I'll say that to the end of my, uh, to the day I die. The last movie, and this is my favorite movie of 2021. And this is a, this, this, like, I just watched this recently. And that is 8 Bit Christmas. You are on this 8 Bit Christmas moment. Hard. Yeah. Hardcore. I am. It is, it is everything a Christmas story tried to be but much better. So for those who haven't watched The Christmas Story, it's the 1950s version. Uh, kid wants a red BB gun a, a rifle and his mom says, you're shooting your eye out. And his dad gets it, uh, gets it to him at the end. If you, ha- if you have 20 minutes and if you have Crave and down in the States, uh, HBO, watch 8-Bit Christmas. I cried. I'm sorry. Any, I, I right. was hallucinating for a second. What did you say about the Christmas story? Red rifle, BB gun. Can I shoot no, no. Before that, everything that it was trying to be. I'm sorry. The you Christmas like... story is a classic. No, it's not. Christmas story has nothing good. Christmas Story is not a movie you watch at Christmas time. Christmas Story is something you watch when like you go to the dentist to get like a root canal and that's how much pain it is to watch that movie. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. I'm triggered. <laughs> I'm sorry if I triggered you, but Very, when, I, no when, you're not. No you're when, not sorry. When you, when, <laughs> when you like crappy movies, I'm going to call crappy movies out. <laughs> oh, now we're coming for your taste. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw your new kids on the I'm... black mat. <laughs> Whoa. You can come for my taste, but you cannot come for the boys. Uh, what? Is AJ and Jesse and Kevin all going to come and beat me up? Wrong boy band. Close enough. They're all bad. Anyways. So we're going to take a quick break here and we're going to come back on the other side with the top. Actually, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the worst movies that we saw and the biggest. Actually, let's do that before we leave. Name your worst movies that you saw in 2021. Top two. Top two worst movies that you went on. Oh, excited for this movie. And then you watched and you went, what the fuck was that? Oh God! I need a second to think. You're gonna to have to go before me. Okay, so we'll 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 cut we'll cut to a break right now, and then we'll come back in about two minutes. Actually, in about thirty seconds. But for us, it will be a little bit longer. But we'll be back in thirty seconds on the other side of the commercial with our worst movies of 2021, and then we'll jump into our TV shows. So we'll be right back. <music> Journalism is in crisis, and our mission here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast is to tell the story that isn't being told. It is vital that independent journalism survives with the rise of fake news. Every penny that is contributed to the Cross Border Interview Podcast goes to help continue our work to tell people's stories. All of our content is produced and edited by our team. The Cross Border Interview Podcast provides entirely free content, and we will never hide stories behind paywalls. By supporting a new model of journalism, our listeners, like you, are supporting real, independent journalism. Consider making a monthly donation via our Patreon account, or make a one-time donation by Interact eTransfer. Now, let's get back to the show. 
And we are back. Welcome back to another What a episode. great commercial. Oh, thank you. It was the greatest commercial of asking you to subscribe or advertise or potentially uh, donate to the show. I'm not sure which one I put in there, but it was great. We love that. Um, so before we move on to TVs, we have one last thing that we want to talk about, and that is the movies that we watched. And we went, what the hell? Why did they make it that? So for you, we, 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 we were going to go with two, but Michael and I, well... We have three that we really want to talk about. So let's talk about those three movies that we went, what the hell was wrong with these people when they decided to make this movie? So for you, what was, let, let, let's go one and one. We'll just rapid fire here. What is one for you? Yes, Queen Cinderella on Amazon Prime. Okay. Mine was Peter Rabbit 2. Oh, RIP James Corden. RIP. Shoe should be canceled. Next one. Let's see the next one malignant it was a horror movie it was real bad i also like totally spoiled the ending because it was such a like what the fuck moment okay uh my next one was space jam 2 <laughs> again okay. should not be making sequels <laughs> to movies that do not need sequels next last one for you Addison Rays, he's all that. Why did we give that TikTok star this damn television program, movie, whatever? It was awful. It was just so bad. Stop giving TikTok stars who have not a lick of acting any kind of job. Thank you. They're good for 15 seconds for a reason. She's not even that good for 15 seconds. And my last movie, my last movie, again, on the sequel kick, Coming to America. I didn't see it. Eddie Murphy. Why? <laughs> Just why? Like, get back together with uh, Scary Spice. Go away. Do some good things. Just don't make move. Don't make sequels to movies that you made in the eighties. Like, I do not want to see Beverly Hills Cop Four. I do not want to see. I think any- that's coming. Of course it is. So those are my three movies that I went. What the hell? what seems what they actual fudge so let's let's go to the last topic of the show if this this is the point in time if i had the budget i would put the who wants to be a millionaire like music in here but i don't so here we are top movies of top tv shows of 2021 as the programs Top programs of 2020. The programs. Programs. The programs. The programs that kept our attention. The programs. So let's go. Top 10 in no particular order. Michael. No particular order. Would you like to start us off here? Sure. Um, Again, this voice retire to Florida. Um, So I have to. We have to start out with you. Season three of you that came out on Netflix. It was everything i really liked it i really liked it i haven't seen the first two seasons so i wouldn't be able to tell you a lot of fun i think you is one of netflix's strongest shows um narratively i think it does a perfect job saying what it wants to say and it's great that they switch the cast up so much so we get to see a wide range of actors and actresses and we got to see shalita grant and in this household we love shalita grant are we doing two or one? Because I can do my next one also. Let's do two. Let's do two. And again, this is where we're going to fight. I thought Wine Division was one of the best television programs. programs oh, it's on my list. Year. I think that the music was great. Agatha Harkness was so brilliant that they gave my girl Catherine Hahn her own television program, which I am still so shook that people did not know Catherine Hahn. I thought she was a household name. Apparently not, because all my friends were like, oh my God, this Catherine Hahn chick is brilliant. And I'm like, Y'all don't know my girl, obsessed with Catherine Hahn. So very happy she's finally getting the, uh, the stardom that she is due. Um, and Agatha all along was a bop my entire year. So I can't, I can't not have it on here. Um, for me, Ted Danson, Tina Fey, Mr. Mayor. I enjoyed oh, yeah, it. You liked that. I did. I enjoyed it. I, I like politics, though. So, 
uh, and then to to just ditto you, I will say WandaVision was good in the comparative realm of other shows that have come out this year. WandaVision was quite good. So I will give you credit where credit's due. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Mr. Mayor has one of my favorite um actresses from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend on it. She played Heather in Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I don't know her. I I can don't, never don't remember her, her real name. I only know Rachel Bunch or Rachel Rebecca Rachel Bloom from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, clearly, and um, Donalyn Chamberlain because my husband knows Donalyn Chamberlain. So that's the only reason I know the name. Um, <laughs> okay. Next two. But she, yeah. Next two. Bridgerton season one on Netflix. Ooh, it was steamy in all the right ways. Yeah. It was great. It was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant movie or TV show. And I loved every second of it. I was hooked. I'm ready to watch it again. I wanted to go to an old, like, 1800 style ball after watching this uh, program. I really wanted to. And then Lock and Key season two, what a great second entry into that show. I think where they're going with it's brilliant. I cannot wait to see the next season where they go. Cause I know the comics are so focused on Dodge being the main villain. And so the fact that it's going to kind of shift into a new direction, very excited about it. Okay. So my next two are a little controversial. Because I wouldn't, because you might classify them as a movie, but they're part of a TV show. So I'm not sure where I should have put them. So I put them in the TV show because it's basically. You're going to say Zoe. No. Oh. No. I'm going to say South Park, the COVID special. Oh, oh. I love South Park. I love South Park. All okay. right. Because you know what? As much as we talk about canceled, being canceled, if there's ever a show that needs to be canceled, it's South Park. But they get away with it because they give, they don't give two shits, right? And they're like, okay, whatever. So I watched it. I liked it. I, I'm not sure if it's a movie or a TV show, but I would say that that's one that I would have gone with. The next one, sticking with the sort of the relatively newer shows, is Hawkeye the new Marvel's TV show, Hawkeye. I liked it. I've liked it a lot more than I liked Captain, uh, sorry, Winter Soldier and Falcon, but- I didn't like that one. I did, but it wasn't my favorite. So those are my two. Next two- I'm you. still a little behind on Hawkeye. So I've only seen the first two episodes. So I got to pick it back up and watch more. Next um, for you. Next for me, Handmaid's Tale season four. Okay. It was- it was the season that, and I mean, even the, the, the people who make the show said, oh, this is going to be a season for the fans because we've put you through hell for the last three years. So I'm like, okay, I'm here for that. We love a season for the fans. It did not disappoint. I have, and that's one of those shows that I finished each episode and I'm just angry. It finally had an episode that it finished and I was elated. It was the finale, sure, but I was elated with how the finale ended. And Next, Squid Game on Netflix, I think, was one of the... I, don't make that face. I know, you don't like things that become memes, and Squid Game became a huge meme. But no, no. Squid Game became, like, like unrealistic. Meme. Everyone was doing it. When the Mr. Beast from YouTube is redesigning I things, did watch that. I was like, dude... No, I, I I am done with this. I can't anymore. I just need Squid Games to not be a thing. So it was it, just, it's this year's Tiger King. Oh, did you watch Squid Games? Oh my God, did you see that? Oh, I didn't see that coming. Oh, what you know, about this speaking guy? of Tiger King, no, I'm kidding. I did not put Tiger King two on this list. I'm done. I did not. Um, I, I will give you it is turned into culturally as big as what Tiger King was comparable, basically saying that it is this year. I just think overall, this was a brilliantly written TV show. I think what, I think the story was really good. I think 
it brought those battle royale style movies and TV shows that are huge in Asia that never seemed to make it to the States. It brought that concept to the States that for some reason was really impactful. And I'm going to be real. I don't think they should do a season two. I really don't think they should. I like that it is, uh, I wish it was just a one-off because I think it was really perfect. Yeah, but they're going to screw it up season two. Yeah, I know. They're going to screw it up and it's heartbreaking. Anyways. So for me, the new season, season five of Young Sheldon. If you haven't watched this, this is the spinoff of Big Bang Theory. This season is getting good because this is the season where his father, Sheldon's father, actually starts having an affair. And it starts to destroy the family dynamics that they built up in the first four seasons. So I'm really liking it. I'm really liking the fact that they're going in a non-traditional sitcom uh, venue where they're going into the more, yeah, you know what? Real life is actually messy sometimes. So I like it. I think people should watch it. The next one, and this is going to really piss people off. I'm living for the Connors, living for the Connors. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, it makes my life feel good. Whenever I watch why, is the- that gonna, why is that going to piss people off? Because Roseanne and- it's She's not like, affiliated. I know. I don't still, even think she makes money from it. No, she doesn't. But there's still that like underlying theme of like, oh, it's the Roseanne. So- I don't think anybody cares. I, I mean, if, if you're getting canceled for that, I think- like Roseanne's not involved. She's not getting money. These are still actors that need jobs and need to work and, and have families to feed. I not the show for me. I also never watched the original run of Roseanne, so I really I have no emotional I feel, ties. I feel old. <laughs> okay, what well, next two for you? <laughs> don't hey, don't give that smirk. No, I have to say it, and it's going to trigger you. So season two of Evil on Paramount Plus was probably, I know, I'm sorry, I couldn't not. It was so good. I think the switch to streaming and not prime time was the best thing for that show because then it could be a little darker. It could be a little more provocative. It could say more of what it wanted to say that you weren't going to get on prime time TV. You were saying something? Because of the FCC. You were um, <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I know I know. this is a rough spot and longtime viewers slash listeners will know exactly why this is a rough spot for you. Um, and then I know we talked about it and I just started watching it, but I kind of want to include Wheel of Time, which is on Amazon, which is still air- currently airing on Amazon and is going to finish before the year is up. I have no connection to the books. I know you love the books. I have no connection to the books. I'm really liking, I love Rose, Rosamund Pike. I think she's brilliant. I think she's doing a really great job. And I think this is filling the whole Game of Thrones left in my heart when it tragically ended after the sixth season. So we, got, we never got to finish the Game of Thrones story. So I don't know how it ended um, because it tragically ended after the sixth season. And that is the story I'm going to stick to. Um, I, I have no idea what at last season you were talking about. Game of Thrones. Uh, I think Wheel of Time is brilliant. And I really do hope they take it in a good direction. I know that a lot of interviews have said that they're adding and incorporating things from later books earlier. And I think because the source material is already there, like, yeah, play with the story a little bit. But unlike with Game of Thrones, where they were writing scripts blindly, not knowing what was going to happen, the source material is done. So it can't deviate too much. And I think that what they're doing is really cool. I really, I like the special effects of it. And I think the acting is really fun in it. And the costumes are really great. And I love me like a power grab type television program. And I think that this is a great program. I know you- I'm literally editing my list as we're talking because I'm like, I watched some shows and I was like, okay, just want to make sure that I've I've captured everything. So my next two, BBC, Mr. Russell Davis, 
my 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 hero from Doctor Who. It's a sin. Great show, great mini series over in the UK about the AIDS crisis in uh, England and mm. the height of it. I would highly recommend it. And yet again, going with a little bit back into the political realm, The Young Rock. Oh my God, that was a TV show. Didn't it get canceled? Nope. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Dwayne The Rock Johnson running for president in 2032 with Rosario Dawson as his running mate. Is that like actually what's do going to be happening? I don't know, but I thought it was awesome. I think it's awesome. Oh my God, I need a Xanax awesome. already. Awesome. I need a Xanax already. Anyway. So the next two for you. Um, Midnight Mass which was a limited series on Netflix. It was super low budget, but I think the script was so brilliantly done. And I think there was some of those, some of those monologues, if you as an actor are not taking them and using them for your auditions, I think you'd be foolish not to, because it's so brilliant. It's, it's got a really great impactful story and it's got a giant metaphor. And I think it's just such a cool, like one-off show that it's a it, it, I just I did not see it coming and you can tell that, that it was a low budget but some of the makeup jobs they have on the older people look so bad but it's just such a great film or tv series and then lastly Pose season three I have to include it it was such a great season it ended the show perfectly and I'm kind of glad as much as I wanted more Pose I'm glad they ended when they wanted to end, as opposed to one of those shows that's kind of going and going and going and going. And then it's surprised there weren't viewers, so we cancel. And the longtime viewers are stuck in like a weird spot where they're like, wait, we need to know how these stories end. They got to tell the story they wanted to tell in the amount of time they got to tell and have it end. And I think as much as it was a little like, there was some jump the shark moments, particularly with Electra working with the mob and getting lots of money. I still think it was a brilliant, it was brilliant for what it was. And I think I'm very pleased that Pose happened and I'm very pleased that I got to watch it all while it was happening. And I, I just hope it opens the door for more trans people to get cast in things. What's your second one? Uh, no, oh, you said midnight mass. mass. I'm like, I'm done, though. I have no my, more. My my, my my last two before my top two movie, TV shows of uh, 2021. Ghosts, which if you have not seen on CBS, is a really good show. Uh, it is a remake from the BBC, BBC show Ghosts. And it's actually quite funny. I enjoy it. I enjoy the remake of it. I hope, hopefully it does not become the office type of remake, but it's good. And this is going to my childhood, like Kevin Smith can do no wrong. Masters of the Universe, the remake that they did for Netflix. Dear God, Mark Camel, Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yes, 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 yes. We love Sarah. Casting is awesome. Directing is awesome. Scripts are awesome. It is fantastic. And I highly recommend it to anyone who has not seen it. So those are my next two. And what are your last two, Michael? I, don't, I just did 10. Was that? That's only eight. No, I did 10. Did I do 10? Did you do 12? I did. <gasps> A scandal. Well, and there are my, so there my, my next two are my next two are RuPaul's Drag Race and RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> like, I don't RuPaul know. Drag Race on, down under and RuPaul's God, Drag Race. No, God, no, no, that cannot be said ever that I enjoyed that. Um, I mean, yeah, I watched a lot of RuPaul. I don't know if I can count it as good TV, but I've watched more hours of my life in RuPaul content. So, I mean, I guess I can include that. It's Okay. It so is this, what it is. So my top two movies, TV shows of this year. Top two two movies, uh, TV shows of this year. One, 
the first season of Loki, the Marvel TV show Loki. I think it was well done. I think it sets up the next uh, few stages of uh, uh, Marvel movies and TV shows for a while. So I think it's awesome. And this is the controversial one. There's not a lot of people watch it and they think that it's an overrated TV show, but I thought this season was fantastic. And that is season two of the Apple TV show, The Morning Show. Renee Zellweger, Jennifer Aniston, Steve Carell. If you have not watched it, watch it. Renee Zellweger? Yeah. No, that's... Reese Witherspoon. I'm like, that's not Renee. I love Renee Zellweger. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, that ain't her. I love Reese Witherspoon too. No, I haven't seen season two yet. Again, moving across the country, no TV. It's on the list of probably in January when, you know, shows go to die because nothing's on. Um, That's when I'm going to probably try and watch season two. I also don't like to watch them. I found with the morning show, I need to watch it all at once because it's one of those shows I don't like. My anxiety can't handle one of those. Oh, we have to wait. Like, no, I need an entire weekend to just binge the whole thing. Call it a day. And the, this season actually, like, you think it's going to zig and it zags the whole time and it's awesome. I like the show. I'm not going to lie. I really like the show. Well, after you watch it, you have to tell me how you feel about it because I think it's awesome. I'm a uh, little shocked neither of, us says, neither of us said Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Season two sucked. I liked season two. Wasn't I think there were some weaker one. moments. I th- I'll agree. I think there were some weaker moments, but I really liked the show. I, I do too. I just, it wasn't my top. That's and, fair. It and, wasn't in my top either, clearly. So <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to watching the Christmas movie. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I don't know when I'm going to have a chance to do it, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually sitting down and singing my heart's content to Zoe's Extraordinary Christmas. I feel like I have a friend that watched it recently and really liked it. Okay. And said that it's, it finished the whole story perfectly. Well, and that's the thing, because a lot of fans are calling for like season three and season four, but I think that ship has sailed. Well, I think they want season three and season four because they just want more. Yeah. Like, I want more. You want more. I, a movie, great. Like, I wanted more yeah. sense. I wanted more sense eight, despite the fact that we got a movie. I felt... That was one of those heartbreaking cancellations. I don't like when they cancel a show like that has, because Sense8 was a five season arc that they, after the second season, they said, this is too expensive, we're done. Sorry, Wykowskis. Okay. Now you're gonna about, you're about to figure out why I went to 12. Why? Because I actually have my favorite, favorite of all time TV show of this season of 2021. And this is your 13th reason? Yep. (laughs) My 13th and top. For my 13th girl. For my 13th doctor. For my 13th season of Doctor Who. Doctor Who season 13 was fan-fucking-tastic. I still haven't finished season 12. Flux, as uh, it's called, is one of the best seasons I have seen in a very long time. Um, Good. I am looking forward to season 14 when Russell Davis takes back over, who brought us uh, Chris Ecclestein and uh, David Tennant. And, and I am looking forward to the stories. But if you want to uh, end off on a great note, that is the 13th Doctor because they still have a few uh, specials that they're going to put out through next year. This was the defining moment for a female Doctor. And I know the first two seasons with her were very, very hard to watch. But That's why I this, haven't finished season 12. This was, if not the best season, probably in the last, since Matt Smith, I would say. And I love Peter, Peter Capaldi. I love Peter Capaldi. But this was the best season since probably Matt Smith or even David Tennant. High key controversial. I did not like Matt Smith. You didn't? I didn't. You didn't. I didn't. Oh. He's the only doctor that's gone that I've not liked from the newer doctors. You I'm like, sorry. You I, like Capaldi? I did. I like Capaldi. Capaldi was great. 
I think Capaldi's a brilliant actor, period. Everything he's ever done, I've enjoyed. And I, I like the fact that all the doctors unwrittenly have said three seasons were done. Like, that's perfect. Three years, show us what you've got. Like, don't do what Tenet did and like drag it on for like 10 years, but, or what Chris Eccleston did and just did it for one season. No, Tenet only did three, three seasons. And then but he was he in it for like six special. years. He did four specials over two years. No, because he did he, he did, did the season, season he did season two, three, and three, four. four, and then he did the Russell Davies send off. No, he did four and that was it. of those Russell Davies. Yeah, send-off. but those the Russell Davies send off was like a mini series season, which I thought it was brilliant. I love Davies, but it Davies lasted my two years. The, the the Russell Davies was two years worth. It was two years send off. Yeah, because For those they four little episodes. There's five. No, there was four. Hold on. My brain is just not working with me right now. Um, uh, Kylie Minogue. Yes. I know they did. Um, there was a Kylie Minogue. There was the, the there next, was a water planet one. The next doctor. Because there was, uh, let's see, Tenth Doctor, ooh, five. series three. So it all depends on if you ca- classify the end of oh, time. Oh, you or... right, you right, you right, you right. I thought end of time oh. part one and part two. You right, you right. And I gave it, it to you. You right. And it started in 2018 and it ended in 2010. Oh shit! You right. You right. You right. Don't come for the Doctor Who fucking... Oh, no, no, no. The first... the Oh, because the first one was in 2008. And then they didn't show anything. Oh, they dragged that fucker out. Yeah, because he was... He was most... writing it as he was... Yeah. He was writing it as he was doing it. I enjoyed it. I did not... I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I would highly recommend anyone watching. And then hopefully, knock on wood, they don't do that this with this one, but... They have three specials for Jodie Whittaker to end her run as Doctor Who. I'm actually going to cry. I've cried at every single regeneration, literally cried at every single regeneration. Matt Smith, Peter Capaldi, David Tennant. Oh, don't go. Uh, When the doctor was me. Uh. I'm not ready to go. Oh, brilliant. I was fantastic. <laughs> funny story. This is a funny story. And this is going to be the ending here. When I left the journalism business back in 2015, 2013, sorry, uh, 2015, 2013, 2015, 2015, 2015, I was in the Lloydminster source. And from uh, the, the running thing in that the newspaper industry is when you leave, you write your last editorial, right? Your last, your last editorial. I wrote an editorial with every single Doctor Who's ending sentence in that editorial. No one got it. I was pissed. Pissed. Anyway. There's my there's my two cents. Oh, and you've cut out. There you go. Oh. So with that, that is a look back on 2021 with a very random rant of Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> Again, if we had the budget, we would totally do the graphics, but we don't. Um, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. We will be back tomorrow morning with our very last episode of 2021. Uh, Michael, it's been an honor and a pleasure to do these every last Thursdays of each month. Uh, we will be back for a brand new season, a brand new a brand new show, a brand new episode at the end of January where we will be recapping some of the award ceremonies, but also probably some of the nominations that are going to be coming out. So tune into that. Uh, I look forward to that. My name is Christopher Brown, as always. Michael, thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year. And we will be back tomorrow morning. Keep talking, guys.